you know those little bit jittery nerves you get before starting your drive in any new country new place new rules new way of driving you're a little nervous but i think it is amazing after driving a camper van in new zealand after driving through the alps of austria i think this is the third or the fourth country where no we drove in thailand this is our fourth country where we are driving and i know this is going to be amazing because this time we are picking up a huge car we are picking up an eight seater kia carnival taking it through the entire coast of australia come let's check it out so what are the four things you need to pick up your car in australia of course your passport a valid driver's license a credit card in your name and your rental voucher and for my fellow indians australia drives exactly like us on the right side of the seat and on the left side of the road so you need only your indian driver's license you do not need an international permit for australia so that's your car right there for you it's eight seater All so right. they didn't um, zoom in on anything so they didn't see anything mm -hmm. but what i say to customers are have a look around for yourself please yeah i'll just make a video exactly if you see any significant damage take photos of it for your reference so All that right. we don't tassel you later for it okay perfect it's unlimited kilometers it's full tank now we just ask you to bring back full tank and lastly signature there right what fuel does it use ah lucky you should ask it's yeah. diesel it's diesel diesel yeah, kia right. carnivals are diesel all diesel all right. so that's your keys right there this is your information right here for you thank you um if there's any breakdowns or anything like that roadside assistance 24 7 call that number okay all right, all right. perfect other than that i'll show you where your car is yes please now follow me thank you so much have a good day thank you so much well, i didn't get your name dane nice to meet you dane. Nice to thank you thank you so much thank you and just like that, we have our car for the next 15 days in Australia. Just the one we thought. I like the number 7JY. And I like that I drive a Kia back home, mm -hmm. so this will feel more homely, I'm assuming. Just except the last three seats right. at the back. And most importantly, how it feels to drive around because the city of Melbourne is a little tricky with trams moving in one way, a lot of road rules to follow. So we're gonna give you a virtual tour of the whole city so that you know exactly what the first 20 minutes feel like. Are you sure you want to drive in the city where there's too Let's much? find out. Let's find out. Dude, it's like Amsterdam. Yeah, the city is a little tricky. Yeah, I'm not understanding much. Yeah, me too. So most of the car rental outlets in Melbourne are in the downtown area. And that means your first 20 minutes are on lesser crowded streets giving you some time to get used to driving in a new car in a new place now some of the best tips i can give you are the most simple and obvious ones go slow stick to your lane follow the markers and pay close attention to your signals also when in doubt just go straight and don't make any sudden turns one thing to note in melbourne is to keep the tram tracks clear at all times and it will be very clearly marked so pay attention to the road signs generally the speed limit in melbourne and all big cities is 50 to 60 km per hour so don't go above 60 there are speed cameras at almost every corner of the city another thing to remember is to stop at least 5 to 8 feet before the signals because that is a pedestrian crossing also, finding parking in Melbourne is a huge challenge. In fact, I would advise you to take your car rental only when you leave Melbourne. The city is actually very well connected via trams and you don't really need a car inside the city. Also, we parked our car in one of the parking buildings which are the only designated parking spaces to leave the car overnight and paid approximately 70 Australian dollars for a four night parking. That's a lot. As you enter the main areas of the city, there will be a lot more road markings to follow. So try sticking to your lane. Of course, you can make exceptions like stopping on a keep clear sign, letting a pedestrian cross even though it's not a regular crossing or cutting and changing your lane after giving a three second indicator. Just try using basic driving common sense and you should be fine. Also, the lanes marked red are bus lanes, so you can drive on it, but give way. By now, you should have gotten used to these driving conditions and started to enjoy the drive. 
we drove past the mcg the melbourne cricket ground and the area is just beautiful surrounded with parks and sporting arenas on all sides take note of your signals beforehand because if you want to turn right sometimes the signal to go straight will be green and you have to wait till your red arrow turns green so in all melbourne is a beautiful city to drive around and there's a lot of green spaces and empty roads especially once you get out of the main busy areas of the city and our australian road trip truly begins when we leave melbourne for a 9 hour drive to get to sydney it is when you realize how vast and empty australia truly is and driving becomes a lot easier and a lot more fun so there are two main rules to follow while driving on australian highways first is to always keep the first lane the extreme right lane always free this is the overtaking lane and should only be used to overtake like the white car in front of us and then switch back to the center lane and the second is to follow the speed limit which is usually 110 km per hour and can change depending on the road conditions As an example, I am cutting over to the right lane only to overtake the truck and as soon as I'm done keeping a distance to the truck, I will switch back to the left lane and leave the right lane open. You'll cross a lot of smaller towns along the way and they are all so pretty. where you can fuel up take a food break or a rest stop just be careful of your speed it should be down to 50 60 km per hour while crossing these towns also in special school zones the speed limit can be 40 or even 20 so keep an eye out on these signs most small towns will be only two lanes but honestly it's so empty it doesn't matter Just be careful of your speeds because sometimes there'll be cattle crossing or wallabies will suddenly jump to cross and when you join back on the highway you'll be at 100 110 again so in all driving the highways is fun but just make sure to take breaks at every 2 3 hours at designated rest stops or scenic lookouts and in 9 hours you arrive in sydney Now driving in Sydney is very different from Melbourne. There's a lot of bridges, tunnels, hills and underpasses. And I broke a traffic signal here unknowingly of course, the only violation in 15 days of driving and I was fined 500 Australian dollars, which is about 30,000 Indian rupees just for one signal. I'm not scaring you, but please be careful. Again, it's the basics you have to remember. Stay in your lane, go slow, and follow the road signs and markers. Also, every time you pass a tunnel or certain areas of the city, there will be an automatic toll that will be charged and emailed to you or your rental company. And at the end of the month, you will have to pay them. So make sure your rental company will take care of it, or you have to pay them separately. It's not a lot but for example every time you cross the tunnel to reach city center it will charge you 2 dollars all said and done sydney is lovely to drive around there's quiet quaint neighborhoods and then there's tall towering bridges like the sydney harbour bridge with the opera house on one side and darling harbour on the other In fact, one of Sydney's best activities is to climb this iconic bridge and reach the top of the steel structure, which gives you unparalleled views of the entire city of Sydney. And then the other side is Centennial Park, 
with its green covers and adorable neighborhoods you can drive around again be careful of the speed limits and don't go above 50 especially in the neighborhoods follow single lanes and don't park anywhere except the designated parking areas usually marked in white with pay meters installed on them also one very important thing to note is make sure you're carrying at least one credit or debit card because most parking areas accept only cards and no cash and then finally there's the bondi beach sydney's most iconic beachy neighborhood which feels like a coastal town there's no signals here and people rely on each other to pass by driving along the beach is nice and easy just be wary of pedestrians crossing from anywhere as with any beach bondi is one of the best neighborhoods of sydney and if you want to go to the beach there's a nice parking lot perfectly located at the main entrance to the beach and it is where we are headed now you can park there and spend an entire day wandering around there's cafes bars and eateries and don't forget to check out the icebergs pool at bondi our personal favorite so 9 hours away from sydney lies the beach town of byron bay and i am not showing you how we got here because the video will get too long and it's pretty much like the highway drive we saw earlier now byron bay is the sort of town you love driving in the most and you can expect most of australia's small beach towns to look and feel very similar the population of this beach town is just 9000 people and it's the kind of place where the local aussies come to holiday you'll find pretty villas and beach houses with boats parked outside and the town doesn't have any traffic signals really so stop for pedestrians watch out for kids riding cycles and just enjoy the town you can drive through the entire town in less than an hour and parking spaces are very easy to find although all paid the perks of a small beach town and a laid back coastal lifestyle you will see it all year in byron bay we have already driven more than 1800 kilometers from melbourne sydney and now byron bay and i can tell you some of the best reasons why you should drive in australia firstly cabs can get expensive especially in smaller towns and public transport is scarce like a bus every half an hour by now our rental car had already started feeling like home we were six people with all our luggage sitting comfortably in our eight seater kia carnival not having to worry about packing or repacking every time we checked in into a new city honestly the freedom of having your own car on any holiday is unparalleled stop where you want take detours along the way and in a whole new country have a space that starts to feel like home i would highly highly recommend it So one hour away from Byron Bay is the most famous city of Australia, the Gold Coast, and we are driving on its most iconic part, the Surfers Paradise Beach, with tall skyscrapers on one side and the endless golden sands and blue waters on the other. Driving in Gold Coast is easy. Just be careful of paying in for your parking meter when you park on the promenade. we were fined 100 dollars because we forgot to pay in the meter except that don't drink and drive obviously anywhere in australia but even more so at the gold coast again follow the road rules watch out for pedestrians and keep a check on your speed limit 
We have driven almost 2000 kilometers by now and since we were returning the car at the same place and flying out of Melbourne, we drove back 2000 kilometers more. Some other tips to note, I always prefer getting a full insurance that way I don't have to worry about any damage to the car and also they don't hold a deposit on my credit card and it doesn't cost as much and it takes a lot of mental stress away. Always book your car rental from a reputed place or brand. Trust me, there's no hassle and those few extra bucks are worth it. Also, when you give them a return date and time, always keep a few hours handy. I like to keep a 10 hour buffer just in case something goes wrong. It's better than paying a late penalty fees. When you take any car, treat it like your own, keep it clean and tidy and always return it with a full tank if that's how you received it. Also, this one is a little personal but since we're reaching the end of the video, I'll just say it. Whenever I pick up any car rental in any country, I say these two things to myself. I am not going to bang into any person or any animal and that I'm not going to drive it down a cliff and injure myself or anyone else with me. Apart from that, things may go wrong, like a punctured tire, a $500 fine, a wrong turn, maybe slightly banging into another car too. These things may feel like the end of the world that day, but in hindsight will make travel memories you'll look back and laugh about and maybe even cherish. And if you have come so far in the video, then I'm pretty sure you're seriously considering driving a car in Australia. And in that case, let this video be a sign that you're ready for it. See, Australia is a stunning place and driving here was one of the best decisions we made. Of course, you'll have jitters and be nervous until you finally do it yourself. But I really hope this video helped to make it easier for you. And if it did, then I'd like to ask you for just one thing. Hit that like button and say something to us in the comments for us to read. Until then, thank you for watching a festival called Life. This is the end of our Australian road trip and we are ready for our next country. I hope you are too. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because the next country is going to be even more amazing and I cannot wait to share it with you. Until then, bye-bye, take care, adios.